you're up to bat. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'll, I'll try to be brief. Uh, this is my third year here, and it, it's been interesting being on the science committee and trying to sift through uh, the science and, uh, you know, whether something is peer-reviewed, uh, whether it's not, and uh, the rejection of, of uh, recommendations that our, our science is peer-reviewed. Um, so it's been, uh, for this Nebraskan, uh, interesting and in how we might contribute and especially as it relates to industry in my district. And uh, if any of you could speak to uh, the impact, uh, the, your perceived impact of uh, livestock industry, I've heard various uh, accusations, and if, if any of you would uh, care to comment on that. Uh. I'm no expert on the livestock industry, but uh, I do know that one of the concerns with respect to li livestock uh, and global warming are methane emissions from livestock. And uh, I know that people are working on various ways of removing methane from gases that might be in barns or pens where livestock are held, and it, it might be potential for the kind of research to remove greenhouse gases from the atmosphere in general also to be applied to facilities uh, such as livestock pens or barns. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, I'm, I'm involved with the University of Kansas in a group uh, that's doing this interdisciplinary inter, uh, graduate education. And uh, certainly it's, it's one of your neighbors. Uh, but uh, the, the group there is, is getting technical training in agricultural sciences as well as techniques to mitigate or perhaps reduce some of this. But part of the group's also looking at behavioral issues and choices and ways of, uh, of working together with the, with the, the industries uh, to, uh, to advance their, their purposes as well as uh, other, other goals. And so uh, the point I was making is that I think that the education we have often is in content and technique of science or techniques of engineering, but that social dimension is very important. And so looking at, uh, looking at issues like global warming and, and making uh, personal commitments and personal decisions, I think, is a very uh, significant aspect of this uh, program. It's not a solution to the beef issue, but uh, it, it, if smoking is bad for you uh, or, or beef is bad for the planet, uh, people have to make some decisions or, or alignments. Are you suggesting that beef is bad for the planet? No, but others have. It's been in the news recently. Well, I, I did read uh, comments of a writer one time who said that eating a T-bone steak is more egregious uh, to the environment than uh, driving a Hummer, per se. Um, I, I was astounded. Uh, you know, I'm not sure the nutritional values were considered, you know, in the, in the, That's right. the, uh, uh, in the bigger picture. But uh, certainly there's some concern, especially amidst this economy, that um, in, in uh, the so-called mitigating efforts – whether it's uh, cap and trade, uh, which is called a lot of other things, um, or whatever approach uh, we might take, uh, I, I hope that we remember that we need to look at the big picture uh, economically, uh, that uh, <laughs> there are some important factors here. Uh, Dr. Caldera? You know, we don't not know how well these methods will work, these solar radiation methods will work at affecting regional climates. But th there's at least some possibility that as a result of climate change, weather conditions will change in America's heartland and that this will impact on the production of grain. And, uh, you know, I would be misleading you if I said, oh, well, I thought we could reverse this. But I think there's at least a potential that a research program with a relatively small investment could understand, you know, if the American heartland does turn into a dust bowl, is there a potential to change weather patterns to allow us to engage in agriculture once again? And, and, and so even if there's a small probability that this will occur, the investment is small, and so the expected benefit of this investment is very high. Mm -hmm. In my part of the country, uh, that I represent, uh, we, we had an extended drought, and now we have uh, certainly a, a wet October. Is that wet October a result of, of uh, climate change and uh, the carbon emissions? 
There's a lot of weather variability that, because of the chaotic nature of the weather, so you can't attribute any drought or any flooding event to global warming. Uh, the probability of different weather events changes over time, but certainly that's just part of normal weather variability. Okay. But uh, cows do put a burden on the climate system. There's the methane emissions, and there's all the energy used in the production of beef, and so that is one of the mitigation strategies is for people to l eat less beef, and maybe there could be a, a way for your constituents to gradually transition to other things that they could do that, that would be uh, – emit less greenhouse gases. I'm sure that's the answer you wanted to hear, uh, Mr. Smith. <laughs> if only my time uh, had not expired. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You.